We see now a few easy examples of a C CW complexes. Well, the easiest one one can think of is just a discrete set of points, and this can be regarded just as a zero-dimensional CW complex. If you look at the definition, this was the first step in the construction of a CW complex, and we just stop at there, we halt, and we do not proceed with attaching any, any other cell. The second easiest example probably is the unit interval. It is a one-dimensional CW complex um, since it is uh, homeomorphic to D1. The dimension of a CW complex is the highest dimension of the cells that compose the CW complex, or equivalently, the highest dimension of the disk, uh, unit disks that we use to uh, make the CW complex. Since the unit interval is homeomorphic to D1, then this certainly is a one-dimensional CW complex. It, uh, it can be given more than one cell structure. Let's see the first one, the most obvious. We just take as a discrete set of points on which start to attach cells, just the empty set, and then we take uh, the disk D1, and we have no attaching maps of D1, so we just take D1. The equivalence relation we quotient by D1 is just the trivial one, so each point of D1 is equivalent to itself and no other point. So we have this trivial, if you will, uh, CW complex structure. Let's consider the following cell structure of the unit interval. We take as a zero skeleton the disjoint union of two points, D0 here and D0 here. Disjoint union with, and we just take one disk, D1, right here. So let's draw them down. We have two points, one here and one here, and then as disjoint union, a unit disk here. Let's first analyze what the attaching maps are. The attaching map is unique and goes from the unique uh, D1 disk, one dimensional disk that we have, to the zero dimensional skeleton which is this one, the disjoint union of these two points. So it goes from the boundary of D1, which is again disjoint union of two points, this and this, going to the zero skeleton, is just a bijection, sending one point to one point and the other point to the other point. Now let's see what the result is in the quotient set by the equivalence relation which makes uh, equivalent this point to this and this point to that. So first we have in the quotient set the images, the, the equivalence classes of these two these two uh, points that are the, it is the zero skeleton. And once we identify um, these two points with the, the D1, via the attaching map, we get this. It's like we are connecting these two points with the D1 right here. So this is the quotient set, and it is obviously homomorphic to uh, the unit interval. And this is the second uh, CW complex structure to the same topological space, I. Before passing to the next example, let's see what the cells are in this decomposition. We have three cells. Two are zero-dimensional cells. One is the class of the D0 here, and the other is the other class of D0. So E01 is just a class of zero right here. E02 is the class of one here. And then there is a one cell, E1, which is the, uh, the the open interval 0, 1. Remember that the cells are the images of the interiors of these disks. If the disks have dimension greater or equal than 1, and here there is just 1, it is this 1, 
Then there are two disks of dimension zero. In that case, we just take them as uh, zero, uh, zero dimensional cells. So e, uh, E01 corresponds to this D0, E02 corresponds to this D0, and then the E1 is the interior because it is the image of the, um, it is the image in the quotient set of the interior of D1, so it will be the open interval between 0 and 1. As a third example, we will discuss the S1, the unit circle, and we will give it a one dimensional CW complex structure as follows. We take um, as a zero skeleton just a one point, D naught, D zero, this joint union just one one dimensional disk, D1. Uh, if we draw the union, the, this joint union of these two disks, we have a point and a unit disk here. Now, what about the attaching map? Well, there is, it turns out that obvi obviously there is just one uh, a unique attaching map f from the boundary of D1 to D0, simply because D0 is a point. So the boundary of D1 is the disjoint union of the points negative 1, 1 in D1, just like in the previous case. So the, uh, there is no other map from uh, the set of two points to a set of one point, which is D0. So we will be sending this uh, point 1 in D0 and the point negative 1 to D0 as well. The result of this is going to be, as a quotient set, we will have the class of this point right here, and then all the points in the interior of D1 will be not equivalent to anything because they are in the, in the interior of the unit disk and the equivalence relation will be acting just on these two points of the boundary and it will identify this point with this and this with that so we'll be getting a circle where the, a, there is a point right here which will be the image in the projection of this point and also of this point and this point. And every every other point in the circle will be the image of the open part of uh, the interior of D1. What are the cells in this, this decomposition? Well, the cells, uh, there are just two cells. One is the image of D0, which will be this point here, E0. And then there is a one cell, which is the complement of this in here. This is the image of the interior of D1. We may wonder now what a one-dimensional CW complex will look like after we, we have seen uh, a couple of examples of one-dimensional uh, uh, CW complexes. Well, a one-dimensional CW complex is something like this where we have a bunch of uh, uh, points, one, two, three, four, and so on, and to which we will attach disks, one-dimensional disks. And the attaching maps can be either, since the, bo the, the, the boundary of D1 is just a disjoint union of two points, mm, there are just two possibilities for att attaching maps. One is that these two points go to two different point in the zero skeleton, for example, like uh, in here. In this case, we attach the one uh, dimensional disk uh, to separately, separately to these two points, and also right here. Or else, the two points in the boundary can go to a unique point in the zero uh, skeleton. So these things are circles, but they have a different uh, uh, CW complex structure than the one before because they are obtained, for example, this one is obtained by taking as a zero skeleton three points and then three unit disks being attached to, uh, to this skeleton by taking always um, a bijective uh, map from the boundary of the unit disk to uh, two of the points in the zero skeleton. So we can get a, 
like in this case, the different cell structure of the circle uh, than the one we discussed before in uh, point uh, three, in the example three. And so these one dimensional CW complexes are called graphs. And this is an example of uh, one of them. This is not a connected uh, uh, one dimensional CW complex. As we see here, there are three connected components, one here, one is just a point and the other is this. Let's go higher up in the dimension. And as a fifth example, we consider spheres Sn. Sn is a n-dimensional CW complex, as we will see. And once again, we have more than one cell structure. The most obvious one is the generalization of the one we have seen in example three. We take just the two disks, one in dimension zero, one dimension n. And as a touching map, now the boundary of the n is a n minus one dimensional sphere, is no longer a disjoint union of two points. But uh, the only way I can attach this to the uh, n minus one skeleton in this structure is just attaching it to the unique point in the zero skeleton. Here there are no intermediate disks, so uh, Sn in this decomposition will have just a zero skeleton and then the, uh, the one skeleton, two skeleton, three skeleton will coincide with just the zero skeleton up to the n minus one skeleton which still be the, 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 the just d naught, so the zero skeleton and the attaching map can be just the constant map to from the s, mi s minus one sphere to the point d naught. And the quotient set will have a class of D naught. Um, the the points in the bundle of N will be equivalent, all equivalent to the point in uh, D naught, and then everything else is sent homeomorphically uh, on uh, in the in the quotient set. Therefore, this is going to be exactly a S a, a dimensional sphere S N. A second cell decomposition of Sn can be can be given as follows. Um, we take a n minus one dimensional skeleton of Sn, and we take Sn minus one as uh, such a skeleton, and then we take two n-dimensional disks, which we will call d1 and d2. In the case n equals to 2, you can easily see what the procedure uh, looks like because in this case Sn minus 1 is S1 and we think of S1 uh, to be the equator of the sphere we want to get by attaching two disks. One is D1 uh, dimension 2 and the other is D2 uh, dimension 2 which we will glue along the equator in such a way to get the upper hemisphere and, and the lower hemisphere. The attaching maps uh, from the boundary of, S, uh, of D1n, which is Sn minus 1, is going to be the identity, and the same for the, the second n-dimensional disk D2. Let's see graphically what this looks like. So we start from this disjoint union of these three um, objects. One is S1, and then there are the two disks. We are going to use these uh, attaching maps from the boundary of D1, that is the circle S1 that we highlighted here in red. And the attaching map will be sending this S1 to this one dimensional. So the picture is for, of course, n equals to 2. So Sn minus 1 is just S1. We will be sending this boundary to S1 by the identity map, identity S1. And the same goes for the, the second disk, D2, 1, right here. So what will happen is the following. In the quotient, uh, we will have the image of S1, so these are all the classes represented by the points in, X1, in S1. But these points are identified to the points of this boundary of D1 and this boundary 
of d2 by the attaching maps therefore the quotient uh, topological space is going to be this where we have the upper hemisphere which is for example uh, the image of this d1 and the lower hemisphere is the image of this d2 in the quotient uh, set what are the cells in this decomposition the cells are uh, there are two dimensional cells one is the upper hemisphere and one is the lower hemisphere and then there are the cells arising from this s1 and we have seen that we can decompose s1 in several different ways the, well the simplest one is by taking a one a zero dimensional cell which is just a, a point here can be taken any point in this s1 so we have a um, e0 uh, so a, a zero dimensional cell some somewhere here on the equator and then the the complement of this point in the equator which is homomorphic to the open interval and this is going to be a one-dimensional cell so altogether we can decompose the sphere s2 in four cells the last cw complex we will consider in this lecture is the so-called n-dimensional real projective space denoted uh, with this symbol where r stands for real is the set of all the lines in Rn plus 1 passing through the origin. Any line through the origin intersects the n-dimensional sphere in Rn plus 1 in two antipodal points and vice versa. If I pick the n-dimensional sphere centered in the origin and I take any two antipodal points, the line connecting them passes through the origin. Therefore, the set of uh, lines passing through the origin can be given the quotient topology induced by the projection from Sn to the quotient set of Sn by the equivalence relation that identifies the one point on Sn with its antipodal uh, point. What is the cell structure we can give to the real projective space of dimension n we take the real projective space of dimension n minus 1 call it uh, r p n minus 1 as n minus 1, minus one skeleton and uh, we uh, take a, just one n dimensional disk and disjoint union with with the with the n minus 1 skeleton and we project down to RPN, uh, taking as attaching map from the boundary of the N, which is SN minus 1, to the N minus 1 skeleton, the map PN, which is the projection that defines the um, RPN minus 1 as a quotient set from SN. So this is a 2 to 1 map. And it is going to be the attaching map of this disk dn to rpn minus 1. We'll see much more about this uh, uh, CW complex later in the course.